So over the last couple of weeks, I've had the privilege of working on just a real gem of a guitar. Uh, this is a 1930s Supertone. Uh, originally sold by Sears in its catalog, um, from what I can gather. Um, a lot of these were just, you know, cheap guitars. I think they retailed somewhere between four and eight dollars. Of course, that's 1930 dollars, so that was worth quite a bit more than four dollars now, but it was still not a very expensive instrument. Now, when I got it, it was actually in astonishingly good shape. Um, uh, you know, you can tell that the paint job on it just looks really, really solid. There's a few places, you know, you look up here and you can tell that whoever played it kind of would fold their thumb over the top so that the paint's worn away a little bit there, you can see. Um, but, you know, even like there's just no corrosion even on the tuners. And I look at the tailpiece on this thing, you know, and it, it, it just, it, it obviously was very, very well taken care of. So the few things that I did to it, I didn't have to do a lot to it at all. Um, I uh, restrung it, so it had steel strings on it when I got it, although likely it would have been shipped with gut strings because the internal bracing is actually not really um, built for the high tension of steel string guitars. So eventually that would cause problems. Now, one reason why I think it hadn't caused problem yet is that many older guitars where you get a lot of issues with steel strings pulling too much tension on the top, are set up with a fixed bridge where the bridge itself is glued to the top of the guitar and so the string tension has nowhere to go it automatically is pulling on that bridge to try to rotate off and rip the bridge off with the string tension um, which causes you know the, the 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 belly to collapse a little bit in here and it, it actually causes a big bulge behind the bridge really messes with the action a lot now on this one because it's set up with a tail piece and a movable bridge all of that string tension transfers all the way from the nut and the headstock all the way down to the tail of the guitar. And the bracing was sufficient enough that it really didn't cause any kind of downward pressure. Um, now, when I picked this up, uh, when, when my customer you know, gave it to me to work on, um, it had the steel strings on it. It had a really jangly sound. I frankly didn't really care for the sound. It sounded a bit harsh and, and tinny. Um, and, uh, you know, I, again, I did some minimal work on it. I, I did a little bit of work on the tuners uh, to, to loosen them up because they were really, really tight. Part of that was the stress of the steel string. Um, part of that was just wear and tear and age. So I took those off, you know, put a little graphite spray on there to, to lubricate them up so that they would turn more easily. Uh, and then I just did a little bit of light cleaning. Like seriously, all I had to do was a very light cleaning, a little bit, a tiny bit of water on a cloth and very, very gentle, just in the areas that needed it badly. Um, but this guitar is in amazingly good shape, and what I love about it most is it sounds really, really sweet. So that's enough for the preview. I'm going to give you a little bit of a rendition, and hopefully this one turns out okay. I'm going to play Fragile by Sting. Thank you. 
Thank you.